Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial by Tutorial Grid. Uh, I'm Cherokee, and uh, today we're gonna look at some film effects that uh, you've seen in a couple of films. If you've seen Zombie Land, or if you've seen like The Fringe, uh, I think they did it in Easy A. It's kind of like a walking with text, basically. It's uh, like text sits on the ground, or 3D objects sit on the ground, and you walk by them, and it's in 3D space, and it looks like it's there instead of you know nothing. But uh. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the footage right here that I got, and that's what we're going to be creating. Got the text effect right there, and then we have another text effect right here. Again, we got Rob walking down the street. We got some uh, our tutorial grid there, and then we have the car. Yes, and that's what we're going to be creating. So, to get started, we have this comp with Rob here, walking down the street. Notice it looks a lot different. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be using a plugin called Camera Tracker. Now, Camera Tracker is not in CS5. Uh, it does not come with it. You are going to have to purchase it or download a trial of it from the Foundry. They make a lot of good plugins, and uh, definitely you should check it out. But we're going to type this in so camera tracker right here 1.0 drag that down and what we're gonna do is uh, what camera tracker actually does we're gonna go ahead and set the in and out point right here set that a little closer that way it's just gonna render what's right here instead of the entire freaking project that has nothing on it so definitely going to want to set that. So we have Rob, we're going to go ahead and click track features. Now what this is going to do is going to put a bunch of these little points all over the, uh, the footage and it's going to track multiple areas of the footage. That way the 3D will be able to compensate whenever certain things go off or in frame. So it's going to compensate for all of that. So it's pretty much one of the most advanced trackers out there. Other than I think there's another one called uh, Synthesis and I don't know there's a couple more but you can check them out if you want to I urge you to try out camera tracker uh, I found it by uh, looking at uh, video copilot and they uh, they are actually sponsored by those guys so definitely check it out but uh, this is gonna take a little while to track so I will be back as soon as this is done alright now if you notice uh, our camera tracker actually tracks the entire thing forwards and then it goes back and tracks everything backwards just to make sure that it got all the information correct. So, like I said, one of the most one of the more advanced camera trackers. All right. Now we have our footage tracked onto our scene here. Now we just have the information on the clip. We don't have any null objects or we don't have any anything else really planned out here. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to click solve camera. Now this is pretty much going to put all the points in, put uh, and do some more information gathering so we can put uh, compile all our images on top of each other. So we'll go ahead and click solve camera. It's going to process all our data here. And notice it says solved reference frame 316 keyframes 20 total RMS reprojection error 1.38 pixels. The smaller that number is, the better. But this should work for what we're actually going to do. You're not going to see a whole lot of movement with our uh, with our frames. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Another thing um, we want to do is create our reference uh, shot, which is going to be our zero shot. That is when the camera is actually going to go into the picture and uh, go past our scene so it's going to need to be reference point zero so we're going to go ahead and click our solve button and down here where it says uh, set reference frame we're going to go ahead and click that and that's going to set our reference point at our first frame instead of 35 where it thinks it should go through so go ahead and click solve camera again and it's going to solve and go there we go now we're down to 1.44 we're up to 1.44 pixels but it'll still work don't worry you can get closer 
uh, projections here. If you are able to know all of your exact camera settings, um, see what it does. It tries to uh, refine your lens distortion, uh, lens distortion, but it tries to, uh, let's see here, tracking, there it goes. It uh, tries to solve for all your camera movements and all that stuff. So you can actually put in uh, how far away you were from the actor and all that stuff and what millimeter lens you're using. And you can plug that all into our camera tracker through this feature. And that would help a lot with getting that number down. But for now, this is going to work until we have that solved and we have all our points. So we're going to go ahead and move forward in this timeline. We're going to find where this car is. Now notice the license plate has been tracked quite well right through here. Now we're going to go ahead and click and drag up. We're going to select a couple of those uh, points of, actually let's connect these three. I like these, actually these two. Go ahead and click on these two. You're going to want to hit create scene first. And that'll create your entire scene and it'll put a camera in and it'll do pretty much everything. So hit create scene. And notice it puts a camera down and it also puts a null object down. So we'll go back onto our camera tracker and we have those two points selected and we're going to hit create null object off of those two points. All right, so now we have our null object created right here. Notice how it's really close to our camera. And we are going to add some text. So car. Now that's cool. Let's make it gray. Car. We're going to put it into 3D space. And notice it kind of disappears. And you're like, WTF, where'd my text go? Uh, let's go ahead and track this to our parent object, which is going to be our second null object down here in the pick user pick whip tool and just parent that down. And then we're going to go into our position of the text. So hit P and notice you have some, uh, some numbers down here. This is your position on the X, Y, and Z level. And you're just going to go ahead and zero that out. So it's not uh, misaligned with your tracking data. And notice it's coming back in. Oh my gosh. And it's there. This is how, how close it thinks it is to the camera, which is, it isn't that close, but we're going to go ahead and scale this down here. Car. Car. All right, let's make it a little bigger, but I'm going to go put this in quarter size and notice it's sticking with that car. It's stuck to that car, which is awesome. So this is pretty much what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and select our rotation tool. This is probably the easiest way around this without having to change any of your camera tracker data. You can kind of pull, uh, you can either keep it like this or you can bring it around to where it's flush with the car. Actually, I do kind of want it misaligned like that. Let's let's do that. And then I'm going to bring it down to where it is right flush with this car right here. And bring it down, bring it down. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't like that. Meh. Just make it flush. Flush and Z level. By the way, I'm using the rotation tool, which is this guy right up here. This one's good, but that's your camera movement. This one is really good. This is just standard rotation tool. And notice it's pretty much well aligned with our scene. So we play it back again. It's tracked with our car. Okay, so we're going to create the uh, 3D type text. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer again. Duplicate. And let's see here. I don't really like this background here. Let's just go ahead and change that to another a darker gray. Actually, I want to get rid of this. 
as well as this one. Get rid of that. Now we just have color. I like this color. Let's change it to another color here. Let's change it to a darker gray, maybe even a, almost a black. And we're just going to go ahead and pull that behind it a little bit. Come on, a little bit. Uh, right there. Less thick, less thick. Right about there. And then I'm going to add another one. Duplicate. And then I'm just going to make it black. And push it back a little further. Now that creates our type of 3D text. Now another thing that I like to do is I like putting little itty bitty ground shadows in. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time. I'm going to use my rotation tool again and rotate it on the X axis. And that's going to bring it back about right here. And then I'm going to scale it down. So it looks as if we have a quite tall sun today. So we'll just do that. And then uh, now you don't have such a harsh shadow on such a day like this. So we're going to go ahead and add <coughs> a softer shadow. So we're going to add our fast blur. So we're going to type in fast and go down here to fast blur. Open that up and kind of blur it out just a bit, just a little bit. Now this, you got, you got a soft, a little bit of a soft shadow there. Yeah. You like that? You like that soft shadow? Hmm? Maybe, maybe a little softer? Hmm? You kind of, you kind of like that shadow there? Hmm? Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. So now this is pretty much the effect that we've created. Let's go ahead and play it back. So there. Okay. Now we're getting up on the text and he's going to walk right past it. Vroom. I don't really like the way that turned out. These are too far away. So we're going to go ahead and bring them closer. If we can. Let's bring them a bit closer because they just seem way too far away on that. that. Closer and then pull this one a little bit closer too. There we go. All right, let's try that. Yeah, that looks better. Now one thing you can do is you can do what's called a pre-compose uh, for your text effects. You can create a text effect and you can create it more 3D by adding more depth and more layers and you can add a ramp to your uh, your text here so it looks a little bit more like it's in a lighting setting or we could just add a light but that's for another tutorial. This is just a real quick kind of easy one that I kind of made uh, today. And it's just fun. This is something I always wanted to try to do. Just never had a reason to try it. But we're going to go ahead and finish this out here by adding some color correction and make this just look a little bit more exciting. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of cancel out those layers there. I'm going to go back into our... Actually, let's. Uh, I'm going to talk to you some about adjustment layers. Let's add an adjustment layer. Now adjustment layer is going to change all of the composition. Anything that is below this adjustment layer is going to be changed by anything that we put on top of it. So uh, for standard color correction, we usually use, or I usually use curves. Bring a curves adjustment on here and we're going to go ahead and just kind of make this a little bit, uh, a little bit darker. Kind of a, Nice little darker setting. A little bit more contrast, if you will. Bring that down just a tad. Blue. Change our blue setting a little bit. Bring that right there. Bring our reds down. And... Uh, Let's change the saturation. Let's give this a different look, shall we? 
So we yeah type in our hue and saturation tool, and we go into. I don't really like that car being that red. Let's change that. Let's change it to a darker or lighter. Nah, darker. Darker is better. And the greens are way too bright for this creepy type of scene. We we want to make this look almost apocalyptic without going fire and crazy. Let's uh, change down our yellows so we're not too oversaturated and happy looking. We don't want happy. We want sad. Right about there. It's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. All right, now we're also going to add something called a tritone layer. Tritone. So type in tritone on there. Put it on top, and basically, you can add, you can make it into a sepia tone or different types of tones. But one of the things I like to do is I like to add a little bit of blue in my compositions. Let's add a little bit different of a color, and then blend with our original composition. It just gives it this uh, overall eerie tone. So the more you blend it in with your composition, the more it's going to be back to your original format. But I just kind of like to keep it at about, uh, about 50, 50-ish. Gives it just kind of a wa not washed out look. It does, it's not oversaturated. It has a very original type look. And uh, yeah, but this looks pretty good. And uh, let's play it back here real quick. Okay, so I wasn't able to get the entire preview queued up because my computer is having a little bit of a problem. But um, this is basically what it looks like in real time. Pretty cool little effect. Kind of, you know, you can have people run by stuff. You can watch it fly on by. You can also do this with uh, 3D and 3DS Max and a bunch of different other 3D programs, which is something that we are going to delve in a little bit later. In uh, some of our tutorials, we will get into some 3ds Max stuff, but this is a pretty easy tutorial. I mean, it's not that hard. You just have to have the camera tracker. Uh, you can also use uh, After Effects Mocha to track the camera, and we'll do another tracking tutorial over that. You can also use the in uh, in After Effects camera tracker to do that as well and that's something else we'll also do but I just kinda wanted to show you this effect and how easy it really is it's not hard at all but uh, anyway this is Cherokee with tutorial grid make sure to comment below if you like it if you have any questions you can comment below and we'll definitely try to do our best to answer them back as well as subscribe and tell your friends about us you know we'd like to help you all out and uh, yeah do that and we'll be friends. So I guess I will see you guys later.